Hello, I'm Bernard Norcott Mahaney. I work at the Blueford branch of the Kansas City Public Library. Uh, April is National Poetry Month, and for April of 2022, I am reciting or reading um, poems of, of Horace. Um, uh, Horace was a Roman poet. Uh, uh, his most famous work were his collection of odes or songs. Um, I'll be looking at books one, two, and three of the odes. Um, which is probably the, the, the best of the odes are in those three books. Um, <clears throat> the, um, I'll be using the translation by David Ferry. Um, uh, translating lyric poems is especially difficult because um, there are things going on in the music of the poems in the original that, of course, are going to be lost in translation. Uh, and you can try to approximate them. I think the best translators generally do what they can in English to replicate the experience for the Romans in Latin, um, but you're not going to get it exactly. It's not going to sound exactly right. And the people who try to get it exactly right, um, it ends up sounding awful. It's, it's, it's not something that's um, that seems musical or beautiful to our ears. And so I think you that that is, is, is its own danger to be too literal. Um, I think you can lose a lot of the magic. So David Ferry does a great job with the poems. Um, the poem we're going to look at today, which is book five in, uh, I mean, book one, uh, poem five. Uh, this is a poem called Tupira. Um, uh, um, Horace is basically uh, talking about this uh, woman, this experienced woman named Pira, uh, who... Um, uh, he apparently had had some sort of dalliance with, or at least uh, that seems to be the deal. She's now with some other young guy and, and uh, having a good time. But of course, it's going to end up badly for him as well. And so uh, he compares sort of loving Pira to being on a ship that then experiences shipwreck. Um, and, you know, you're lucky if you come, come away alive. Now, the name Pira, this doesn't necessarily refer to any particular person. Uh, it's maybe a made-up character. Uh, if it is a real person, this is a pseudonym for her. Um, the name Pira, of course, uh, would be f known to the Romans and to the Greeks as being uh, the wife of Deucalion, uh, who survived the flood. So Deucalion and Pira are like Noah and Mrs. Noah. So maybe that's also why he's thinking of this woman as... Um, shipwreck, right, as a, you know, being out on the sea. So, Horace, book one, ode number five, to Pyrrha. What perfumed debonair youth is it among the blossoming roses urging himself upon you in the summer grotto? For whom have you arranged your shining hair so elegantly and simply? How often will he weep because of betrayal, and weep because of the fickleness of the gods, wondering at the way the darkening wind suddenly disturbs the calm waters? Now he delights in thinking how lovely you are, vacant of storm as the fragrant air in the garden, not knowing at all how quickly the wind can change. Hapless are they, enamored of that beauty which is untested yet. And as for me, the votive tablet on the temple wall is witness that in tribute to the god I have hung up my sea-soaked garment there. So that was uh, poem five in book one of the odes by Horace uh, to Pira. And that final image, you know, he's basically, this, this is new to him. He's ridden this pony before. He's been on the ship uh, of love, uh, on the sea of love and been shipwrecked. And he's hung up his clothes uh, as a as a, an offering to the sea god Neptune. Um, thanks, buddy. I'm done with all that. So that's what that final image is is about. So tomorrow, another ode by Horace.